As Elon Musk explains, people have to know about these declassified photos from Venus by the Soviet Union. These images change everything about what we knew about Venus's surface, how it looks like, and if life is possible on the planet. This new discovery on Venus also created a lot of optimism for NASA to increase the exploration of this planet, and everything started with a Soviet mission on Venus. The Soviet Union during the Cold War was a major player in the race to explore the cosmos. They were responsible for numerous firsts in space exploration, including the first spacecraft to Venus, Venera 1, although contact was lost before it could transmit data back to Earth. The later Venera missions would ultimately yield more fruitful results, with several of these craft successfully reaching Venus and transmitting valuable data back to Earth. These probes captured a series of images and data from the 1960s through the early 1980s that are still considered valuable today. Declassified by NASA recently, these images have begun to illuminate the history of Venus's geological activity and atmospheric conditions. The declassification of these images, which were originally gathered in an era of intense geopolitical rivalry, marks a significant step forward in international scientific cooperation and the sharing of knowledge. The images depict an inhospitable, tempestuous landscape beneath Venus's dense, acidic atmosphere. They show volcanic plains, mountain ranges, and possibly signs of geological activity, providing a rare glimpse into the planet's turbulent past. The Venera images suggest that Venus is more geologically complex and dynamic than initially thought, with signs of tectonic activity and volcanic eruptions. Further, they have helped refine our understanding of Venus's atmosphere, primarily composed of carbon dioxide, with clouds of sulfuric acid. The declassified images provide snapshots of the planet's weather patterns, including its thick cloud cover and strong winds. These revelations about Venus's atmospheric conditions could potentially inform our understanding of climate science and global warming here on Earth. Despite the technological limitations of the time, the Venera mission's images and data have endured as a cornerstone of our understanding of Venus. As NASA plans to return to Venus with their upcoming Da Vinci Plus and Veritas missions, the information from these declassified images can offer essential historical context and guidance. The declassification of these images from the Soviet Union's Venera missions by NASA is a testament to the enduring value of space exploration and international cooperation in science. These images, originally taken in an era of intense competition and secrecy, now serve as a shared resource for researchers worldwide, opening new opportunities for discovery and expanding our knowledge of our solar system. Through the lens of these images, we are not just exploring Venus. We are delving back into our history and the history of our solar system, peeling back the layers of time, technology, and geopolitical rivalry to enrich our understanding of the cosmos. The ongoing study of these images reminds us that despite our differences here on Earth, we share a common curiosity and drive to explore the mysteries of the universe. It is worth noting that SpaceX CEO Elon Musk is very interested in Venus for years already. Even a few years ago, in a tweet, Elon Musk mentions the idea of a possible mission to Venus. The tweet states, Mars is great, but Venus is like hell, so hot lead melts there. Then Musk replied to a question about SpaceX's potential interest in exploring Venus. His reply states, Definitely, Venus is too often overlooked, but added that Venus would be very difficult. Elon Musk has been a long-standing advocate for the human exploration of other planets, with Mars often receiving the brunt of his attention. Musk's primary goal is to make human life multiplanetary, a vision that has driven the development of a series of ambitious technologies at SpaceX, including reusable rockets and Starship, the spacecraft designed for interplanetary travel. But the discovery of phosphane on Venus has turned his gaze towards Earth's closest neighbor. Phosphane, a colorless, flammable, and extremely toxic gas, has been found on Venus in trace amounts. On Earth, phosphane is produced by certain bacteria in oxygen-starved environments, which leads scientists to hypothesize that something similar could be happening in the Venetian atmosphere. While phosphane is an exclusive proof of life, its presence in Venus's harsh conditions suggests there may be more going on beneath the planet's thick, sulfuric clouds than previously imagined. Musk's interest in space exploration isn't confined to merely seeking out potential life forms on other planets, but is deeply rooted in a broader ambition of establishing human colonies across the cosmos. Thus, for him, the discovery of phosphane on Venus is likely seen as more than a potential sign of life. 
It is also an indication of the multitude of secrets our neighboring planets hold and the broader potential for humanity in the cosmos. The exploration of Venus and the implications of the Frostframe discovery align with Musk's ethos of ceaseless inquiry and the pursuit of knowledge that pushes the boundaries of humanity's potential. Whether microbial life exists on Venus or not, the pursuit of this question has already pushed us to further examine our nearest planetary neighbor and consider the possibilities it might hold. In addition, Dr. Michio Keiku's commentary on the discovery of a light rain shower on Venus offers a profound, in-depth analysis that weaves together the threads of the known and unknown in our exploration of the cosmos. He suggests that this discovery doesn't merely reveal new information about Venus, but has far-reaching implications for our broader understanding of life beyond Earth, the potential for planetary terraforming, and the future of space exploration. Dr. Keiku, in aligning with a widely held scientific consensus, places a scientific emphasis on the role of water as a vital ingredient for life. From our understanding of life on Earth, we know that water is a critical component in the formation and sustaining of biological processes. The discovery of water vapor and the signs of precipitation in the Venetian atmosphere, therefore, presents a potential paradigm shift. The surface of Venus, with its inferno-like temperatures and corrosive atmosphere, has long been considered inhospitable. However, the presence of water in its atmosphere hints at the possibility that some form of life could exist in the planet's upper, cooler atmospheric layers. While still speculative, this theory could pave the way for a deeper understanding of life's adaptability in the universe. In addition to suggesting a possible biosphere in Venus's upper atmosphere, Dr. Keiku also points out the significance of this discovery for the concept of terraforming. Terraforming, the theoretical process of deliberately modifying the atmosphere, temperature, or ecology of a planet to make it habitable for Earth-based life, has been a fixture in science fiction for decades. Venus, with its hellish surface conditions, was generally seen as an unlikely candidate. And why? because Venus has the hottest surface temperature of any planet in our solar system, with an average temperature of around 475 degrees Celsius. This is hotter than Mercury, which is closer to the Sun. The scorching temperatures on Venus are primarily due to the planet's thick atmosphere and the greenhouse effect. The atmosphere is primarily composed of carbon dioxide, which traps heat and prevents it from escaping back into space. Also, Venus's thick atmosphere generates an intense greenhouse effect. The high concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere traps heat and prevents it from radiating back into space. As a result, the planet experiences a runaway greenhouse effect, causing temperatures to soar to extreme levels. However, the discovery of precipitation in the cooler layers of Venus's atmosphere breathes new life into the idea. This indicates that a part of the planet already contains the basic element, water, essential for Earth-like life. With substantial advancements in technology, and considering the important ethical implications, it might be conceivable to envision a future where the higher atmospheric layers of Venus could be modified to sustain life. And there are not a lot of nice pictures of Venus, and we have even fewer taken from the actual planet. Just the distance between Venus and Earth doesn't fully explain why we don't have many pictures of our closest neighboring planet. The most impressive pictures of Venus's surface were taken over 40 years ago by a Soviet spacecraft, in the field of space exploration, four decades is considered a really long time. Venus is located a little over 200 million kilometers away from Earth. Although it's quite far, it's only about 19 million kilometers more distant than Mars. Despite this, we have conducted significant exploration on the surface of Mars. Venus has more secrets than you might think, considering how close it is to Earth. It's an intriguing planet because it's almost the same size as Earth and has a smaller makeup. That's why it's often referred to as Earth's sister or twin planet. In theory, it could have developed to be similar to Earth, but in reality, things turned out very differently for Venus. Venus is a harsh and unfriendly place, as shown by the many unsuccessful attempts to explore it. Out of the initial nine missions sent to Venus, only one managed to achieve its goals. It was a flyby mission called Mariner 2, conducted by NASA. The first successful mission to actually reach Venus and make an impact was accomplished by the Soviet Venera 3 spacecraft in 1965. It was a significant achievement since the Soviets had faced eight previous unsuccessful attempts. Additionally, in that same year, Venera 4 sent an atmospheric probe to study Venus. 
The first successful landing on Venus happened in 1970 with the Venera 7 spacecraft. Two years later, in 1972, the Venera 8 also managed to land on Venus. In 1975, the Venera 9 spacecraft successfully orbited around Venus and touched down on its surface. Following that, the Soviet Union launched nine more missions to Venus, with the final one, called Vega 2, landing on Venus in 1984. According to the Planetary Society, the most impressive photographs of Venus taken by humans were captured during the early 1980s. These amazing pictures were taken by the Venera 9, Venera 10, Venera 13, and Venera 14 missions. In contrast, NASA, a highly respected space organization, accomplished an impact mission in 1978 with the Pioneer Venus 2 probe, but they have never managed to land on Venus. Currently, NASA is developing a spacecraft called Da Vinci, which aims to explore Venus's atmosphere through an atmospheric probe scheduled for 2031. Additionally, NASA has two more missions planned for the next few years. Da Vinci will primarily focus on studying the descent through the atmosphere, but might also provide surface data for a brief period of time, likely just a few minutes. Although NASA hasn't landed on Venus, its Mariner 2 spacecraft achieved a significant milestone in 1962 by becoming the first spacecraft to visit a planet other than Earth. During its mission, Mariner 2 conducted a detailed observation of Venus for 42 minutes. This scan provided valuable information about Venus, including its incredibly hot atmosphere. By studying what occurred on Venus, scientists hoped to gain insights into how we can better safeguard Earth's climate. The extreme heat and immense atmospheric pressure on Venus make its surface extremely unwelcoming. Temperatures on Venus can reach as high as 437 to 482 degrees Celsius. On the other hand, while Mars is still a challenging planet to explore, its average surface temperature of negative 63 degrees Celsius presents engineers with much less difficulty. When it comes to the air pressure on Venus, it is over 75 times greater than Earth's atmospheric pressure. While Earth and Venus have a similar gravitational force, the atmosphere on Venus is much denser and thicker compared to Earth. The reason behind Venus's extreme greenhouse effect is primarily due to the abundance of carbon dioxide. Both Earth and Venus have a comparable amount of carbon dioxide in their atmospheres, but unlike Earth, Venus lacks plants, oceans, or carbonate rocks that could help trap and store the carbon dioxide. As a result, the carbon dioxide on Venus has no place to go except to remain in the atmosphere. Apart from the black and white colorized images of Venus showing a curved horizon, there are also edited versions that present a straight horizon. Venus has extreme conditions capable of instantly burning or crushing any spacecraft that ventures near it. However, the Venera 13 mission holds the record for enduring the longest on Venus, managing to survive an impressive 127 minutes. Due to Venus's thick atmosphere, it is not possible to see the planet's surface from space using visible light. The only way to obtain visible light images of Venus is by landing on its surface, which is an incredibly difficult task. However, it is impossible to survive on the surface of Venus due to its harsh conditions. Furthermore, about 30 years ago, there were two balloon probes floating in Venus's atmosphere. It's possible that during their mission, they encountered a light rain shower. Venus has incredibly harsh conditions such as intense pressure, similar to being 900 meters deep underwater, and scorching temperatures that can melt lead. In this harsh environment, the shower that the balloon probes encountered was not made of ordinary water but rather a corrosive substance called sulfuric acid. The discovery was made by re-examining the data collected during the Vega 1 and 2 missions. It is possible that this finding marks the first ever detection of rain outside of Earth's boundaries. Back in 1984, the Soviet Union teamed up with some European countries to carry out a challenging mission called Vega. The mission involved sending two spacecraft to Venus, where they dropped both landers and balloons onto the planet's surface. Afterward, these spacecraft made close approaches to Halley's Comet in 1986. It's worth noting that no other mission before or since has ever used balloons on another planet. The two balloons, each with a diameter of 3.5 meters, stayed afloat in the atmosphere of Venus for about two days. They hovered approximately 55 kilometers above the planet's surface. Unlike the harsh conditions on the ground, the cloud layers at this altitude were surprisingly pleasant. The temperature and the pressure up there was similar to Earth's average, and there was plenty of sunlight shining down. If it weren't for the presence of sulfuric acid clouds, 
and incredibly strong winds resembling hurricanes, the atmosphere of Venus could actually be a comfortable place to live. In previous examinations of the mission, it was commonly observed that the balloons gradually lost helium and descended during their journey. This was typically seen as the end of their tail, with no further significant findings. However, the balloons were constructed with great care and durability. They were made from a special material infused with Teflon, which made it highly unlikely for them to develop leaks. Graham Dorrington, an aeronautical engineer from the Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology in Australia, who authored a paper on this research published on April the 6th in Advances in Space Research, emphasized the quality of their construction. Upon revisiting the old data, Dorrington made an interesting observation. He noticed that one of the balloons, specifically the one from Vega 2, appeared to have decreased its rate of helium leakage at a certain point. It was as if the balloon had somehow managed to repair itself. Dorrington found this discovery quite amusing and intriguing. Another possible reason for the descent of the balloons could be attributed to an increase in their weight, possibly due to a layer of liquid accumulating on their outer surface. It is plausible that sulfuric acid, present in Venus's clouds, condensed into a fine mist, coating the balloons and gradually dripping off. In the case of the Vega 2 balloon, sensor readings indicated a rapid change in its buoyancy within a short span of about a minute. This sudden change could have occurred when the balloon encountered a gentle drizzle, similar to a light shower. In an email to Wired, planetary scientist Kevin McGoldrick from the University of Colorado, Boulder, who was not part of the study, described the research as credible and fascinating. However, he pointed out that it also involved some speculation. Clouds consist of very small liquid droplets that are suspended in the air. When these droplets join together to create a bigger droplet and become heavy enough, they fall from the sky as rain. According to McGoldrick, it is uncertain whether large droplets resembling rain could actually form in the sulfuric acid clouds of Venus, despite the possibility of tiny mist particles. In 1978, NASA's pioneer Venus spacecraft descended through the cloud layers of Venus and examined their characteristics. However, it did not observe any substantial sulfuric acid droplets during its descent. Dorrington mentioned that even on Earth, rainstorms occur irregularly. Therefore, the chances of a probe descending through our atmosphere and encountering a heavy downpour are quite slim. It is possible that the pioneer Venus spacecraft simply missed such evidence during its mission. Additionally, other spacecraft like Mariner 10 have observed indications of rainstorms, although no definitive proof has been found yet. To definitively confirm or dismiss the possibility of rain on Venus, it will probably require a future mission specifically targeted at the planet's cloud layers. If the findings were confirmed, it would mark the first ever direct observation of rain on another planet. In 2005, the European Space Agency's Hujins probe successfully landed on Saturn's moon, Titan. There is a possibility that the probe captured an image of a liquid drop, potentially indicating rain. However, it seems uncertain whether the probe originated from the moon itself or was a result of the probe's presence. Moreover, in the quest to identify extraterrestrial life, scientists are not just looking for complex organisms, but also the simplest signs of life, such as microbial existence. It is in this context that the discovery of phosphane gas, pH 3, on Venus has made a substantial contribution to astrobiology. A biosignature gas produced by anaerobic organisms on Earth Phosphane's detection on Venus has incited a resurgence of interest in the planet, stimulating discussion about the possibility of life's existence beyond our terrestrial domain. In September 2020, an international team of astronomers reported the detection of phosphane in Venus's atmosphere, as published in the journal Nature Astronomy. The data was obtained from the James Clerk Maxwell Telescope JCMT, in Hawaii and the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array ALMA, in Chile. The observations indicated the presence of phosphine at around 20 parts per billion in Venus's atmosphere, predominantly in the planet's temperature cloud deck, approximately 50 to 60 kilometers above the surface. This unexpected discovery aroused the curiosity of scientists around the world, prompting investigations into potential abiotic and biotic phosphine production mechanisms. On Earth, phosphine is associated with life, produced by bacteria in oxygen-poor environments like swamps, sludge and the intestines of animals. However, the presence of phosphine on Venus is peculiar because of the planet's hostile conditions, featuring a highly acidic atmosphere with temperatures soaring above 460 degrees Celsius. 
Abiotic explanations for phosphorane production include volcanic activity, lightning, and even meteor impacts. However, current understandings of these mechanisms, when applied to Venus, do not seem to yield sufficient phosphorine quantities to account for the levels detected. The harsh conditions on Venus make it highly unlikely that the gas could persist without a consistent replenishing source, challenging the feasibility of these non-biological sources. The lack of satisfying non-biological explanations for phosphorine's presence on Venus led some scientists to explore the possibility that it might be a biosignature, evidence of life. According to this theory, Venetian phosphine could be the product of anaerobic organisms, similar to those found on Earth, but adapted to the extreme conditions in Venus's clouds. This hypothesis is not without precedent. Scientists have long speculated that Venus's clouds could harbor life. That's it for today. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell.